Enterprise applications from Microsoft Office 365 are a great way to extend Office 365's functionality and features for end users. This can be something simple as a OneNote Web Clipper or really great features such as Boomerang, which allows you to recall messages at a scheduled time. They're great features to take advantage of. However, there's some inherent risk with those enterprise applications. Hackers have figured out that if they create enterprise applications, they can trick your end users into requesting uh, and granting access to their own hacker app that can then allow the hacker to access your Office 365 with permissions and read people's mailboxes, read their OneDrive, all remotely using um, shell commands. It's a great way to uh, get into someone's environment. And the downside of it is it's not blocked by MFA policies. If a Yen user resets their password, the hacker can still maintain access because that OAuth app or that enterprise app can still be in there. So how do we deal with that? What do we, how do we fix it? Hi everyone, I'm Doug Baker, and this is Just Do The Basics, securing your Office 365 environment. Uh, let's get into it. Let's show you some features that you can do to prevent end users uh, from agreeing to apps that are unwanted in your organization, as well as trick end users from, prevent users from being tricked into agreeing to a hacker app. So here we are in Azure Active Directory, and let's go ahead and put in place the controls that we need to stop end users from agreeing to those consent. Uh, automatically, we'll get uh, set up an admin to get a review option, and we'll, we'll look at how we can lock down these options for your end users. So the first thing that we wanna do in this case is go into Enterprise Applications and User Settings. The first thing I usually like to do in this case is set up to have admin be able to review this. I particularly don't like uh, just an outright deny. I like end users given that opportunity who do they reach out to in this, this scenario? You as an org might not like this. You might wanna just come in and turn off all, you know, basically end, end users uh, request to get uh, access to apps. But I personally like this one because I, I like the productivity access uh, uh, components of Office 365 uh, and I want end users to have a, a structured way to get the apps. So first thing that we do in this case is turn on admin consent request. This will give your end users an additional option of you know, when they get a deny, it'll come in and say, reach out to us, have it go to us. Just gives them a nice option. So I like it. Second thing that we need to do is come into here and select the users that are gonna be doing our review. Plenty of options here. Do what is right for you as an org. In my case, I'm just gonna have it go to a single user in my environment. Uh, specifically, uh, we'll pick Alan in this case. Alan will be doing the review of these apps. You can do group, you can do roles. I've seen you know every, every iteration of this under the sun for each org. Do what's right for you. Second thing is I just tend to leave these as the default. We wanna get email notifications. So in this case, Alan will get that email about the request. Uh, I like to have these things auto expire out if no one's you know, approved it, just auto delete it. And then you know, 30 days, I like to do 15 days. You know, If no one's gotten to that approval in 15, it's probably not gonna happen. Uh, but again, right size it for you as an org. We're gonna go ahead and save that in our environment. And the second step is actually saying block, we'll come in and turn off that. This is the big setting that you really need to change and really want to look at. So um, this is the option here. So when we come into enterprise applications and consent and permission, this is where it now is being controlled of denying access to that. So you can see here the default from Microsoft is a little weak. Um, it's allow all consent. Any user can agree to anything that they want. They can give access to everything in their mailbox, to every app. There is a full impersonate all users option in there. It's, it's pretty wide open. So what we want to do is we need to pick on, do we want to just outright block that? Or do we want to set up low levels of impact in your organization? Um, so this is like things like maybe, maybe Zix is in use where there's an app, uh, you're working with your bank, they send a Zix email to your end users. If there's a low level of permission of that app, like just verify that they're an employee and that they're who they say they are, do you want to have that go through you as an admin? Or do you want that to something that's so low weight in the permission, you know, we can come in and approve that. In this case, I'm going to pick that one uh, for me as an org, but this do not allow user consent at all is pretty good, right? This is just saying every request is kind of kind of to you as an admin and then users can't agree to anything on their own. Either option is great. Um, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and set this 
uh, in this case now. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and pick what we mean when we say low impact application access. So that's gonna be under this permission and classification area. And in here, Microsoft has some pre-made recommendations. And these are actually really good recommendations. So if you're gonna take away these options for your end users, this low permission and these defaults from Microsoft are pretty good for saying these are these are actually pretty low level of access that an app can give. This is things like verified that you are who you say you are, right? So again, a Zix app or a Gmail where it's coming in and wants to just authenticate the user and be verified that they are actually are the end user that got invited to that. This is gonna give them that type of permission. So in this case, the app can view user basic information. Again, uh, you view the user's email, sign in and read the user profile. Uh, open the sign in as the user. So again, all of these things are just the basics of like an OAuth app might come in and say, oh, I just wanna really verify that you're who you are. Boom, we can come in and give this. This is not something on the other side of things like a high permission where it's like impersonate everything about the user. Read all of the end users OneDrive location. There's a ton of things that you could agree to, a ton of things that apps can get access to, uh, you know, via this, this options in here. Um, but the ones that I recommend starting out with, again, is this low permission and this option. So what does it look like when we get these access requests? What is the kind of action you need to take as an admin? Let's go ahead and look at what this admin experience is like and, and we'll show you kind of the what you need to do, how you can approach this. So once your end user comes in and does the request for an app, uh, it'll come into this area under admin consent. And you'll see I'm not the approver for this. I'm not Alan in this case. Um, but here, if I go to all apps that are waiting approval, I can see it here. Here is the app that I wrote, which is uh, an example of an OAuth attacking uh, uh instance end users have come in and they've put in this request um, and I can see the reasons why so here is Diego and Christine and it says not reviewed and their justification why did they want access to this that's kind of all written, written out right there the app details is here so any uh, developer that put in this information this is going to be all of that stuff if there's a reply URL, that will also be listed here. This attack example is like a device-based attack. So there's no URLs that are in my application where I can just you know continuously make remote calls. But you'd be able to see all that information here. Um, you're also able to come in and you know kind of review what, what Microsoft recommends on this. And we can come in and then hit review permissions and consent. And this will take us into the OAuth app so we can view all of the components of it. Right. In this case, this app has access to an absolute ton of information that the end user has uh, requested. So read the mailbox, send message as the end user, sign in as the user. And here is our accept. So if this was a legitimate app, I would need to come in and hit accept here. And then away I would go and users can come in and, and uh, access it. But in this case, I am not going to do that. I am just going to leave it here so I can continue using this as an example. But you as an admin, if you were the approval, you would come in and block this app because we know this one is a hacked one. Uh, I don't want this available to my end users. We're going to go and take that away from them. So uh, that's kind of the admin experience. You'll also get an email notification since we set that component up. Uh, you'll be able to see that. Now, the other thing with enterprise apps that you wanna do is you do wanna continuously review apps that are in your environment um, because these don't go away. So if you were using like Proofpoint at one point and then you switched over to Office 365 email security, those apps would continuously maintain access in your environment. So um, typically we will recommend customers come in and do quarterly, yearly review of all the apps that have been approved in your organization. That can be as simple as coming into the applications here and saying, hey, do we still need these components? Uh, you know, just go one by one and checking it. Um, there's also some really good features in Defender for Cloud App that give you the option to uh, open that up up and kind of review all of those things. So um, uh, I really like this feature from Defender for Cloud Apps. So let me just show it to you real quick. 
So once you set up Defender for Cloud App, there is an OAuth portal here. And there's there's some new features from Microsoft all about governance also that came out recently that are, are also really nice for managing these OAuth apps. But you can come into Defender for Cloud Apps, go to OAuth apps down here, and this is a excellent view of all of the apps that have been approved, denied, and you can audit and review these quarterly as a as an easier option of looking at it. I really like it because it you know lists out how many users are using it. Apple internet account, this is my iPhone that I'm using. Uh, this is that OAuth attack, but everything is in here. Like, uh, so, you know, again, DLP alerts, things like that, all of these kind of custom apps that you want to create, you know, we can come in, show it in here, get the list, we can deny it, we can find out who's using it, what apps that have access to it. Again, OneNote Web Clipper, and we just see all of the data, really nice view. So hope this helps, um, gives you some options for managing OAuth apps kind of going forward and some pointers for, you know, how to continuously have these type of components in your environment. Uh, if there's questions you'll have, make sure you reach out.